it has come to my attention that a male from the class of self-hating Sambos, I won't name him, has been spreading rumors about me, quote, trying to throw the pussy at him. I ignored it at first because these are the types of black men I believe black women should divest from. But self-hating men and women seeking one another's invalid validation will flock together across gender no matter what until the inner work of healing towards self-love is achieved. These people are a virus, so wear your masks when you pass. Although it is my opinion that this type of black male should be ignored into oblivion, I became aware of people who actually do matter picking up on this story. So of my own volition, I have this to say. The last person I would offer up my private parts to is a self-hating colorist who has neither the intelligence, masculinity, nor finance to preserve my caliber of womanhood. I seduced this man and half a dozen others in order to have a voice on their platforms during the initial conception of my YouTube channel due to the fact that I had been blacklisted by some of the most popular black YouTubers in black YouTube land. Blacklisted for defending myself with unflinching integrity and the unadulterated truth which made certain others look as bad as they actually are in real life. Narcissistic masks slipping all over the place thanks to my social justice warrior inclinations and the glory for that belongs to God alone. Look and listen. I make no apology for manipulating my way onto panels of more popular males using my large and extremely well-endowed body and bosoms to do so. At the time, I was single, alone and being slandered by droves of people. It was more than cyber bullying. It was a cyber lynching. Also at that time, the same nasty negative nothing was on trial for being the ugliest, most undesirable maggot in the manosphere. I played to his extremely fragile ego by uplifting the face leagues of others put down, flirting in the comment sections and even sending an email or two about using his face as a sexual seat of sorts. Also gently exposing the fact that his is a face I would never want to be face to face with, furthermore subconsciously conveying that ours would be a relationship like that between my hind parts and toilet seat. I do my business and go. You know who you are. You threatened to show those emails, sir. Show them now. This anti-black female member of the black manosphere was using me to antagonize his peer in personality and character, which is why my name was mentioned all these years later in the first place. In hopes of bruising that male's ego to the extent of his own, the fanatic invoked my name. In plainer words, he used me as a bragging right to throw in the face of his co-equal, feigning some semblance of superiority as if to say, the woman you wanted so much never had a chance with me, therefore I am superior to you. In reality, this man was at least able to catfish me into caring for him, while you, sir, could only be used as a pawn on a chessboard. I admittedly seduced him and other monetized male content creators, literally outing myself later, uploading the art of seduction as the Bible for how I moved. Lol. (laughs) Why? Because effeminate men don't respond to the pain of feminine women. When I was being brutally, publicly slandered and suffering from the most heinous form of a narcissistic smear campaign launched at me to keep the narc's masks from slipping, no one would hear me. No one would hear me because they were desperate for a seat at the cool kid's table and to defend me was to forego their chair, which requires bravery, not the cowardice that reigns over them like the heavy rains of the Pacific Northwest that once reigned over me. 
I'm a proud little nature girl born in an evergreen forest. <laughs> I began unseen, going from chat to chat, live stream to live stream, asking someone to hear me, hoping to appeal to the goodness in their hearts, the manhood in their hearts, to protect me from this other man. The joke was on me because each of their individual hearts were vacant of goodness and masculinity. Indeed, every man I approached to hear me out was a black woman hating coward, deserving nothing more or less than the same energy, a thing I learned by and by. As a strategy, I cammed up, scantily clad, in all manner of high-cut dresses and low-cut tops, proving not only with my looks that I have no reason to be some obsessed stalker of a man missing several teeth in his 40s, but also with my literal receipts that I was guilty of no such thing. Which is why until this very day, I, though I no longer mention these people, you can hear perversions of my name on their channels mentioned daily. My truth was a hard blow to their lies. The sexual harassment has hardly come to a close, but these days I'm in a better position to handle that as opposed to crying out to others to be saved. As I proved that I am well-bred, cultured, and attractive, more men and women who suck up to these fraudulent fake psychology degree having men and women were willing to give me a voice read. They were unwilling to give me a chance as a true victim. They were only willing to give me a voice as a true vixen. When you are only able to be heard as a proud vixen, but not as a humble victim, no one trust that you are dealing with lawless villains. How could I apologize to people like this for anything, let alone something as menial as seduction? I got on their platform, said my epic piece, relayed my receipts, and got out of there. The fact that I have not been back over to these platforms since the establishment of 1,000 subscribers on my channel, and, and even prior to that, is proof enough that this was strategy alone and not some real romantic interest. This man sent me his real-time address from his phone to my email, literally with the marker pulsating on his location. How come he didn't text it to me if I wanted to sleep with him? Wouldn't I have given out my phone number to a man I wanted to sleep with? How can I be willing to give up, quote, the pussy when I'm not even willing to give up the digits read my phone number? The jokes write themselves. Just because I am no longer fighting on panels about my reputation doesn't mean my team doesn't note those who routinely use my name in vain. Allegedly around the same time, he was dealing with a woman he drove across the country to have sex with, only to be rejected at her door, which makes the conversations he has had with uh, these black men as for sweethearts about me no surprise. Indeed, the hate both women launched at me in the past were because of him. If it were something I had actually done, there would still be smoke. Now, there is no mention of me from either woman because I've never truly offended or harmed them in a way that would sustain such a fight. I'm kind, and people know as much. Both women praised my caliber of personhood before and after being done with him. When it comes to kindness, compassion, and sweetness, I'm the genuine article. You've got to be a throwaway of a human being to earn my disdain. Listen here. If I was interested in this failed father of a dark-skinned daughter whose skin he hates, whose pain he won't validate, whose looks he won't affirm, I would have responded by accepting the invitation he sent in the form of his real-time location. Instead, I responded with sheer horror. When he releases those emails, you be the judge on who and how his current real-time location was shared with me. I told him he'd been hacked as a gentle way to reject him, knowing all the while as a fellow iPhone holder that this 
is not possible. Don't you threaten me and my ancestors with a good time, sir. We'll take it. I responded to the email sent, adding a blind carbon copy to other YouTubers in case this conniving coon tried anything, which was obviously a good move because he obviously did try something, the filthy forsaken fool. These black male YouTubers meet and sleep with a number of women on these YouTube streets, but want to discuss my private parts, which have never been part of their lives or bedrooms, aside from masturbating to what was revealed of revenge porn, which can still be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I collect information for legal purposes, never to dox, but to inflict real life consequences on those who take my name and reputation in vain. Slow and steady wins the race. I am patient. I can wait. Some of us ladies are quiet, remaining out of your toxic spaces because we know to stack up money and information before going after a criminal. Doxing is nothing. In the real world, a viable lawsuit establishes actual truth and actual victimhood. And I hold that I have been victimized by the lot of you. And I do not have to come in the form of some ideal victim to be a victim. So talk your nonsense. Because the more reaching you do on my name, which cannot be proven, the more footage, the more footage I will have to sink you with. It would behoove you to shut up. And leave me alone, since it is well known that I am with a man who can afford to protect me. But you fools who do not comprehend that level of life continue in your folly. Fine by me. Prove I'm as insignificant as you claim by not allowing me to be so much as an afterthought. <sighs> Lastly, It's the performative God-fearing for me. These fake Christians like Mr. Deny Jesus 824 times before the cock crows are no match for real practitioners of sincere spirituality and faith. No real Jesus Christ fan lives, speaks, nor acts like these, him and his croonies. Their claims to relationships with God mean nothing to me. I'd choose the devil over any of them, whose character has been proven far superior to these lot. I simultaneously remind and finish the fake character Christians with the words of Christ in red regarding tree and its fruit. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruit, you will recognize them. I recognize these hateful hypocrites as exactly what they are. They are worse than trees that bear bad fruit. They are unfruitful and frankly fruitless. Screaming Lord and Savior at a being they are hardly true to. I read to you now from the New Testament, the book of Luke, in closing. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You see, I know what I am, and I claim my reality without being dubious regarding who I am. I display on and off my channel, God-given authenticity, faking 0% of who I am. Although in the past, as a hypochondriac, I diagnosed myself with things like autism and borderline personality disorder, things no professional would agree to diagnose me with. 
save a peer from school who was trying to do me a favor when it came to receiving free therapy for my PTSD. And I'm not mad at her. Everything living dead and unliving respects sincerity. You, on the other hand, are hypocrites. Claiming a deity you do not know, do not love, and your every action makes what you conceal in your heart known. Again, from the bloody red words of Christ, I relay this as a message to that fantasy Christian. Do not judge or you will be judged. For with the same judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, read your sister's eye, but fail to notice the beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye while there is still a beam in your own eye, you hypocrite? First, take the beam out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not throw your pearls before swine. If you do, they may trample them under feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Being trampled under the feet of swine does not discourage me, no indeed. It only affirms the jewel, read, the pearl that I know I am. Someone once told me, pretty girls wear 20 pearls. And I tell you that the best girls are Omega pearls. I am protected and I am out.